Thanks for staying with us. It's now time to go to the papers and see what the headlines are. We have joining us a public affairs analyst in the person of Mr. Jide Johnson. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. It's a pleasure to be with you, Nango, and uh, happy new month. Happy new month to you and happy survival of the flood. I hope your area was not that flooded. We, we are just getting started. You know, Lagos is a coastal region. Mm. And um, we don't have a comprehensive plan to deal with it other than demolishing houses. But I hope um, we'll come to terms with the reality of what we need to do. We are so fortunate in this part of the world that we don't usually have Ukraine. And uh, if you are Ukraine and all those storms that they face in the Western world, a lot of people will have been swept away. Mm. Oh, well. Uh, we, we thank God for survival, like I said, and uh, for the people that have, may have lost a lot of properties. Uh, some people may have lost some other things because of this flood. Well, our uh, hearts go to them. Uh, but we do hope that the government will do its part and the people, especially here in Lagos, will also do their part to be more hygienic, more mindful of where they drop their waste and every other thing that needs to go into uh, that to make sure that we have a safe environment. Uh, we're starting this morning with the business NG and the first uh, headline here is uh, loan craze Nigerians borrow to survive as economic hardship bites. That's the first headline on uh, uh, business NG this morning. So I don't know how you feel about what the Nigerian people are going through right now and they're talking about uh, these uh, loans. Uh, unfortunately, the banks do not even give these loans as much as uh, they should. It is the, the um, loan sharks, as they call them, that are giving these loans. And then after that, uh, if you're not able to pay at a particular time with the kind of interest rates that they have, then you become a slave uh, to them for maybe the rest of the year or the rest of your life. Well, it's very clear. The, the theory books are very clear with respect to um, borrowing and lending people money. Said that the borrower is the slave mm. to the lender. It's, it's, it's a time-tested principle. And um, like you pointed out, if you look at the stringent condition uh, that these loan sharks give to people, in order for them to assess credit, it's, it's, uh, it's unimaginable. Uh, you, you, require, you think that the... Um, the commercial banks should come to the aid of small and medium scale enterprises or uh, what we used to have in the past the cooperative banks whereby people will band together contribute money de make deposit in the bank and then they go borrow more money to run their businesses with little interest placed on it for repayment um but for me all you just need to do is to look at the templates that were all the templates that worked in the 60s all the templates that work in the 50s that made our economy to grow faster, that make the people to be to, 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 to be wealthier and more prosperous. What are those things that we were doing then in terms of the financial sector, in terms of the agrarian sector, in terms of all, even all the sectors of the economy? We never had technology then. Um, we don't even have modern means of transportation that we have now. And the level of sophistication is not as high as it is now. You imagine that with the advent of technology and the level of sophistication and exposure to information and communication and technology, life will be better. Rather, life is not getting better for people. We are becoming more, uh, more, more, more enslaved in the society we live in. People are becoming more depressed um, in, in the economy. The economy has entered not even recession, it has entered depression. And so, for me, the way out is what was it that worked for us in, the, in this? Not giving out cash. You could see that the approach of the government in the last nine years of trying to revive the economy by giving out cash, direct cash, popping cash into the economy, uh, giving 50,000, 25,000, traders money, whatever name they've given to that, will not help this economy grow. What was it that we were doing in the 60s, in the 50s, that made us to grow? Uh, that's what we need to do. And there's a need for us to reform the banking sector. Um, how do people assess credit? within the banking sector. At the end of the year, the banking sector will declare among us profit. Profit unimaginable. And then you ask yourself this question. If the banks have this profit, what we are deploying back this money back into the economy? Um, money increases. The, 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 the velocity of money 
in your economy increases when it is in circulation, not when you print it. The money is not is not the paper that you have. Unfortunately, people that have managed the economy, not only in Nigeria, globally, post-COVID, what they did was to go ahead and print money. No. What money? I got into Professor Ivan Fisher, the lead to economics. I, I did the, what makes money to grow is for it to be exchanged in value. You created you created a value. And if there is a value, there's 100 naira in me. I purchase a value, that 100 naira. I purchase a value of 100 naira from you. That 100 naira has increased to 200 naira. You purchase a value when you leave the studio, you purchase a value from another person of 100 naira. The 100 naira which I've given to you has increased in value to 300 naira. And, and it goes on and on and on. Go, by the time the 100 naira is coming back to me, it might, like, it might be like one. one 400,000. And that's where money is created, not for government to print to print money through ways and means. And we've seen that, that every administration keeps printing money, pumping money into the economy, thinking that the economy will grow with with, with large amount of money pumped into the economy. And what do you have? It's hyperinflation. It's, it's not only peculiar to Nigeria, it's peculiar to all society post-COVID. It seems as if government, those at the management of the affairs of government, don't know how to manage the business of government. Mm. They are good at the political side, but when it comes to the business side, to the economic side, it seems as if they are not at all. <coughs> no, well, Excuse me. Okay, well, um, the Tinubu, Tinubu inaugurates Presidential Economic Coordinating Committee. That's another headline there. Is this um, the way to go? Is this the, the solution we've been looking for? Uh, this economic uh, committee has people like Al Aliko Dangote, it has people like uh, Tony Lumelu and others, and they are expected to inject a lot of money back into the economy, like is it uh, $2 trillion or so into the economy? Is this the way to go? You think there's some respite at the end of the tunnel? Well, um, when you have the major beneficiary of the prevailing economic system to be the one that will superintend the the new economic system, and then I don't know whether it's a pipe dream, whether it's a pipe that has a hole in the beginning, and then you have an illusion that you get to an end because the, the middle is a bit blocked, and then by the time you get to the end of the pipe, you discover that the pipe has an opening. So you are just through, through, through an illusion. I don't know how those category of individuals will be the ones that are thinking about the turnaround in the economy. Individually, there's nothing they have done to bring about the turnaround. These are the big, these are the big shark. Let me use, you know, we have used them, um, the, the loan shark, but these are the big shark in, 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 in the business, in the business community. And in the business community, it's based on the principle of survival of the fittest. It's based on, it's based on the principle of profit maximization. So you are bringing somebody that makes money from the, it's like United States of America bringing Warren Buffett bringing um bringing Warren Buffett, bringing John Soro, bringing um bringing uh, Bill Gates to come and form the economic team that to bring about the revival of the I don't know Nigerian diaspora that works in World Bank. I don't know Nigerians in 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 academic institutions that know about how government can come up with policy that will bring about the turnaround but not bringing about business, private business enterprise, those that have made money and through 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 ways of avoiding the regulations, the re regulations that will have they've circumvented the regulation in making money. So it, these are the same set of people that they have given that have access to government. And what do you think will be their recommendation is the way in which they will stifle they will stifle any competition. Uh, all of those that are involved, what have they done to competition? They will stifle their competition, and then in, in the process you please. Uh, public monopoly with private monopoly. And that's what is happening in many of the industries. Most of these people we are, we are talking about are operating it. Well, if um, this is the way to go, as far as the president is concerned, all we need to do is to support them and hope and pray for the best. And then, But we'll keep an eye. We'll not take our eyes off the ball. We'll, look, we'll wait for six months to see what they will do. And um, after six months, we we'll begin to evaluate their performance. My own goal, my own take is very, very simple. What are the key performance indicators? If you are setting up a committee, what are the key performance indicators that you want to put in place to ensure that we, have, we use those metrics to measure and evaluate whether they achieve the objective of setting the committee or not? Otherwise, it will be another another jamboree. Uh, I read a book, uh, Isop and the CEO. 
He said, if you don't want, if you want to, if you don't want anything to get done, set up a committee. If you want to waste people's time, not for anything. So let's see whether this committee will be will be an outlier. It will, it, 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 will, it will be an outlier to that conclusion by by Isop and the CEO. Uh, well, when I saw the, the story, uh, what came to my mind, no matter what the flowery things they said about uh, the reason this committee was set and how good these people are going to be for the Nigerian economy, I, I was thinking about Shoyinka and uh, Tai Sholarin. Because lately, uh, Aliko Dangote has been complaining a lot about the economy and the policies of government. And, you know, after making noise for a, a month or so, or a little more than that, the government just finds him so worthy to become uh, part of the committee, just like it happened to Tai Sholarin and um, uh, uh, Wole Shoyinka, where they were given the, um, is it Bank of Agriculture or something, and then Federal Road Safety Commission, uh, to go a, a, and, and superintend over it. After that, uh, they were more or less rubbished uh, so that they will learn a lesson. I hope that this is not that's just another case of saying, you have made enough noise, come and see what is happening here, and then they want to rubbish these individuals. I hope that they really uh, will bring solutions to our economy. Well, when someone with um, Dangote stature, with muzzle, uh, in Nigeria, both politically and economically, even in Africa and globally, um, is complaining about um, business being stifled at that at its level. Mm. What do you think will happen to those? What do you think is happening to those at the lowest level mm. in terms of uh, the various forms of regulation True. that has made it practically impossible for people to run their businesses and make and make and make profit and in the process uh, regenerate the economy? So that the economy can grow by reinvesting whatever profit they make in in their small and medium scale enterprise back into the economy. So if someone of language stature is complaining, what do you think is happening to others? Either someone that has enjoyed serious form of incentives and um, benefits from the government in terms in terms of government um, giving giving him giving giving him and others some concessions which are unimaginable. So if he's complaining. Uh, what do you think is happening to others? Uh, like I said, it's just that um, so that we don't become uh, pessimist all the time. Let's be an optimist, mm. at least. Let's wait for six months and let's see what will happen after six months. But I don't like upsetting up the committee without key performance index. What will be the what will be the yardstick we are going to use to measure? And what are the metrics? What are we looking out for? It's not just about bringing people heads together. You know how many committees this administration has set up in the last in the last in the last one year. You know how many committees this administration has set up in the last one year. So, and, and what have we got in the committee they set up for the minimum wage? There's nothing that has been done concerning that. Um, we went as if it's business as usual. By the time labor start complaining again, well, you see people shifting blame that labor, labor is impatient, labor is this, labor is that. Uh, what about um, the committee on food security? What are, what 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 has what has happened to that? I just you know it's. It's, it's, it's. Oh, well. I don't know. <laughs> committees don't upon know. committees. Let's go to political matters now. Um, uh, first of all, we, we have uh, the Edo Guba. PDP rejects court judgment. APC woos Igodalo uh, to defect. Let me just join that with another one from the South South. Uh, I know w w you know what is coming. Fubara, appeal court nullifies order. Uh, on defection of pro wiki lawmakers. I think I'm more interested in this, um, in this uh, River State uh, saga. Now, this is the president being set, or almost being set, even though there are divergent views from uh, different camps, that one is saying that uh, the, the, the people, the, the nullification or, or the removal of the assembly members was not done by the courts. Others are saying that it was done. Uh, by, it was affirmed by the court and all that. So uh, I don't know what your take is on the future of Nigerian political space, uh, whatever is happening in River State now. What is happening, what is happening in River is not new to Rivers and is not new to Nigeria. You recall when Amichi was the governor um, and um, um, Yansan Wiki was the Minister of State for Education. And PDP was at the center. You recall how um, they broke their head and 
and some members were injured and, and uh, um, the minutes was taken and it was on record i saw i saw the video um it was your sister station that had that video and we knew what happened now we now have another scenario playing out with um yeah, so wiki as a minister and then another person as the governor when he was minister they came to the house to break people's head in the first time in the first instance now that is a minister again the house uh, things fall apart the house cannot see well um like i pointed out the court will either help this country to go or further scatter this country the interesting thing is that i don't know the credibility index and the confidence level that nigeria have in the judiciary as an institution with respect to contradictory pronouncement they made concerning 2023 elections because if you look at the various judgment particularly the appeal court with, with respect to elections into the national assembly um both senate and the rep and that you see conflicting judgment from different jurisdictions of the appeal court with respect to who is duly elected and who is not duly elected who is qualified and who was disqualified so as far as i'm concerned concerning the river state and like you pointed out, I, I saw different media organizations. Depending on where they are, they are, they are depending on which of the side of the divide they belong to, mm. framing the the story to suit their narrative of the ideological leaning or political leaning they belong to. And that's not helping an average Nigerian. I think what the media should do is to be an arbiter, interpret the judgment of the courts explicitly in such a way that a five-year-old can understand and not come with technicalities that even those that are educated can't even understand what the report is all about. We've seen conflicting reports. One said that, okay, the 27 is gone. Another said that the, 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 the 27 lawmakers have been reinstated. And you have your extant law. The law is very, very clear. It's written in black and white. With respect to what you need to do, when you have such situation whereby there is an open declaration and defection of people when there is no division within their party we all knew what the concern state concerning that but we've seen a lot of political interference in the in the judiciary and now you see where that matter went to just that yesterday the minister of federal federal capital territory said they are building houses for for a court judges they are building houses for a court Judges. So, uh, well, we, we, we shall we either help to, to strengthen this democracy, to deepen the institution, or they will help in destroying this, this, particular, this particular institution. Because this present political class, they will come and they will go. And whatever case precedent the judiciary is setting, we will we, we made reference to in the future. And I want them to understand that there was a judge in 1979 that made the pronouncement of 12 to 3rd. It's on record that... Uh, there is 12 to 3rd, and nobody knew what 12 to 3rd of 19, what 12 to 3rd of 19 is, whether it's 12 or, well, to 3rd, to 3rd of 19 is, but he came with the, he came with the pronouncement of 12 to 3rd. Uh, I think it's Justice Fatai Williams or so. If he's not the one, I, I apologize. It might be an error of judgment on my part to his, to, to, to his family and to, to him if he's not if he's not the one. But there was a judge and that, that gave the lead judgment concerning Shagari, uh, versus 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 um I will lower then in, in 1979. So everybody studying law today we made reference particularly studying electoral litigation again. We made reference to that to that case. So whatever they do, they should understand that they are putting their name in print and in in the sands of time people will come to see it. Because this is just unimaginable. On the issue of that of a two state, the bottom line is that um um <clears throat> that one we don't even know what this is all about. It's the same thing. While you see one camp saying that this person has been disqualified, you see these other camps as this this person has not has not been di disqualified with respect with respect to 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 parties cannot disqualify a court cannot disqualify candidates. You can either nullify the election or based on the process and the procedure of the election, whether there is no compliance with with the stand law that governs how the election um, primaries the primaries of the party was or was conducted in selecting in selecting the, the candidate for the election. So most of the times 
the judiciary creates confusion and then the, 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 the body that is meant to educate the people, that is meant to enlighten the people, that is meant to make people to be conscious of what the institution of order, which is the media, the fourth state of the realm. You know what we do? We also create confusion. And if you pick 10 newspapers, I can bet you that five reported from one angle, another five reported from anger, and then we have we hide under the oh the angle with which we re report the news. You understand the basic principle of news writing is five W's and H. So we focused on who, they focused on what, we focused on where, they focused on why. It's just black a dash. It's, it's just black a dash. The bottom line is very simple. The judgment is written in plain English, pure and white. What has the court decided? And then we should have access to that court document. Why can't they, in this age and time, that the judgment should be posted online. There should be a website of all these courts that we can access and a, a private citizen can access and then we can all make sense of what the pronouncement is, not waiting for paid paid agents of, 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 of political parties who are parading themselves as journalists, interpreting the judgment of the court to suit their pay masters. Yeah, because I was wondering why it always takes so long for the certified true copy to come out. And uh, when it does come out, at the time it does come out, there's been so much speculation on the media and every other space about what the judgment was. And then when it comes out, people don't even uh, understand where to stand because everybody has been giving one version or the other of the news. Okay, um, let's go to the Guardian newspaper. Now we have left... Uh, uh, we're going, we're going to the Guardian right now. And the first headline I'd like to take is um, EKEDC disconnects Luth CMUL from electricity over 252 million Naira debt. In a bid to get more revenue, in a bid to do whatever the explanation is, the electricity tariff has been moved almost like every month is being moved up and up. And so critical infrastructure, critical places like the Lagos University Teaching Hospital has been disconnected. Uh, so it means that they cannot pay this money. And because they have been disconnected, you and I know the kind of losses that we might have of, of humans even, or any other thing that will go with an institution like that, that is um, built to cater to the health needs of the people. I don't even know if our craze for more revenue is doing us more harm than good. Well, um, it's a two-way thing, the double society. You recall, I think, whether late last year or early this year, and uh, that um, UCH2 was disconnected by the IBDCC. Um, um, it's a double whammy. But the bottom line is that what you have management in, in this institution, I can bet it, I'm on the side of the electricity Company. You have management in this institution. Are they making money? Are there provisions for the payment of this electricity bill um, over time? Uh, if you, all you just need to do is to send your to, to, to send your, your 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 camera crew and a reporter to go to loot and see the volume of of patient we have, and then you look at the kind of payments that are made by this patient. So why are those managing the affairs of this hospital, not paying the bills. If an ordinary patient will not be attended to for not paying his bills, you just know, doesn't to go to this hospital, they won't attend to you if you don't pay your bills. Why can't they pay the electricity bills? There's a management team and they are making money. Yes, but I, I quite agree. I quite agree with you, Mr. Johnson. But uh, for, take for instance the University of Benin or so uh, that uh, the students had to go and block the road because management was not able to give them electricity. And one of the reasons is that they have made their budget for the year. They know how they pay their bills and all that. And the tariff was hiked to 200% in a very short space of time. And the students were demanding for 24-hour electricity, especially now that they're preparing for a examination. So will you blame it on management for not paying these electricity bills when they have made a budget and what was budgeted for electricity has been overtaken because of the the rise in the in the tariff of uh, this yeah, electric this we discourse. are going somewhere you know that's why i said um, it's 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 a double whammy 
the second aspect of it, there are critical sector that government needs to subsidize their bills, particularly the educational sector. While I was in Union, like I'm, I'm, I was rest assured that if there was no light at home, there will be light in school. We enjoy 20, 24 hours. Uh, uh, so sometimes even when we went on vacation, the mid semester, the mid, uh, the mid semester or semester vacation, some of us still, still particularly. Um, some of us still, still around those that are from far distance still, still around and wait for the beginning of of the of the of the, of the new semester i understand what you are saying it's important for government to subsidize those critical sectors there's no doubt there's no doubt about that and then it's also important for government to understand that the incessant hike and what they are doing now is to add two naira three naira four naira to it and if times and i tell you with times three naira times 300 million nigeria uh, let me say three naira times 30 million Nigeria. That's that's 90 million naira. Uh, so you think the three naira is insignificant, but you are making the people dry. So government has a role to play in, in the sense that there are still some sector that needs to be subsidized. You know, government was playing this service that they are, they are not going to subsidize petroleum product. At the end of the day, we, we had that government is actually subsidizing petroleum product. Yeah, we are paying the amount of money we are paying for petroleum. Who is subsidizing what? Mm. So on the issue of 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 of, 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 of that loot and usage, uh loot and university of Lagos College of Medicine, it's important. Government needs to subsidize them, but it's also important for those that are managing this institution. At least we are owing sixty million. The way Nepal, the way this electricity distribution company operates if you are only 60 million you pay 30 million out of the money they will still give you the electricity and then you negotiate and you can't tell me that uh loot does not have 30 million to 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 to, to pay to pay to pay for the electricity that they've used over time with that 30 million uh, you know, i'm telling you because i've been there uh, friends have been there family and friends have been there for for treatment that 30 million they will make more than that today that's that's a fact is it responsible on the part of Okay, well, well, we've heard that um, ban A here and there they are moving tariff. And if you are in ban A, well, we have said that that is discriminatory, and uh, we are waiting for we have not seen any 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 lawyer that will take a class act against the government for dividing the citizen into I different wonder. brands in order to enjoy dividends of democracy. I wonder. So we, 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 there's a need for the federal government to be taken to court concerning that and the electricity distribution company to be taken to court. Every Nigerian is entitled to 24 hours of light. Hmm. It's the basic. I have, there's no part in the world that you have band A, band B, band C, band D. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, to my own knowledge, there's no part in the world. It's, it's an invention and a creation of of the Tinumbu's administration, APC-led government. <laughs> so, well, we either enjoy it together or we suffer it together. <laughs> That's uh, how it is. Uh, well, well, this is where we'll have to wrap it up, Mr. Johnson, on the segment this morning. We'd like to thank you for your time uh, joining us this morning to share your thoughts. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, have a wonderful week. You too. Have a wonderful weekend. We've been talking to Mr. Jide Johnson, a public affairs analyst, and he's a senior lecturer in the Nigerian Institute of Journalism here in Lagos. We're going to take a short break now and then return with our first hot topic. Stay with us.